Time for a little magic, as you can tell from the cape, the hat, and yes, the wand, Alex. Magic. This is a first, but I feel very good about it. What we are going to attempt to do today, through magic is to show how a single investment bank can make three billion dollars in cash in three months time and create absolutely no value as unemployment skyrockets, foreclosures soar, and the dollar collapses. The beautiful thing about this magic trick, I must say, however, is it requires no wand, right. even though it's fun because it goes like this. <laughs> it requires no cape. If you don't have to wear a magician's cape for this? Nope. No need. Why not? You need not have a hat. In fact, it's better if you look <clears throat> like a very trustworthy man in a suit. Is my tie straight? Yeah, yeah. You're right. looking very like a trustworthy. Banker. How about that? Shall we begin? Let's go. All right. I, Dylan Radigan, will expose a Wall Street secret and answer the question everyone has been asking me this week. How did Goldman Sachs make $3 billion in three months' time when all this other stuff's going on? Really? It's just like pulling a rabbit from a hat. Let me explain how the investment giant managed this amazing trick to the table, please. Of course, uh, the astonishing end result, Goldman Sachs stock up 155% in the past six months, and Goldman Sachs netting, yes, 3.4 billion U.S. dollars. They're not worth what they used to be, but what the heck, they'll take them in the last quarter. Quadrupled its earnings, I dare say, from a year ago. Its second most profitable quarter in the history of the firm. Alex, it is like magic. I'm not so sure. Here's where the money came from. Financial advice, 325 million bucks. It's pretty normal. Again, uh, they are smart people. Very smart, in fact, and they're very good at offering very sound advice, actually. Goldman's some very smart people. Uh, selling stocks, uh, again, pretty normal Wall Street business. $363 million uh, they made doing that. Uh, and then bonds worth about $200 million. Uh, I've said that one again. Not a big money business. There are margins. These are very transparent markets, so a lot mm -hmm. of people can see the customers are well-informed. Okay. So uh, you get basically an Legit. efficient price. It's a no, yeah. totally legitimate Legit. services, okay. for sure. Uh -huh. And more bond underwritings, they make more money. More stock, they make more money. Makes sense. But then there's this last item. $10 billion in a single quarter from what they call trading and principal investments. So what does that mean? Well, basically, uh, when our country crashed financially a year ago, Goldman Sachs used all the taxpayer money they were given to buy up all sorts of properties and investments. And now that the economy is recovering, Goldman Sachs is getting rich on the back of the American taxpayer. Since last October, Goldman Sachs has received from the government, that's you, you hardworking American, thank you, presto, 10 billion from the TARP, presto, 11 billion from the Fed, poof, 30 billion from the FDIC, and yes, Kazam, 13 billion dollars from AIG. That a total of yes, 70 billion US dollars. Pretty good, right? A lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's where the magic comes in. Take a look at the chart down here. This is the S&P index right here. Mm -hmm. This is, again, a representation of what happened to the value of almost every asset in the world as a result of the financial collapse. Okay. So again, over, you can see the stock market was sort of moving along there. I just have put, I got a cigarette on my thing. I don't know why. Uh, you can see the market sort of marching along and goes in the gutter here. You right. see that? Yep. At the point that the market goes in the gutter last fall, we give Goldman Sachs $70 billion, as we just described. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They take that money and begin acquiring assets at a time when no one else in the world has any money. Imagine, if you would, that you are on your block, and how many houses are on your block? I would say 10. 10 houses on your block. Now imagine that every house on your block collapsed in value and was suddenly only worth 10 cents on the dollar because there was a great financial panic and a great real estate panic on your block. I have to imagine. That'd be, it <laughs> happened, right? Now imagine that you went to the taxpayer and they gave you, Alex Witt, because you're Goldman Sachs, $70 billion, and you were able to go and buy every house on your block for 10 cents. Make sense? Well, In other words, they came into this right? distressed asset pool using taxpayer money when every other bank had collapsed. Bought things cheap. Bought everything on the cheap. Okay. Then, and they bought it, which is fine, other than the fact they bought it with our taxpayer money with which they would have otherwise been bankrupt. In other words, Goldman Sachs doesn't exist without taxpayer help. Period. Yeah. But because we actually allow them to continue to exist, and we supply them with all this money, they take the money and buy all these assets. Then, we 
by way of the Federal Reserve and the Treasury and a variety of other vehicles, put 23.7 trillion U.S. dollars underneath the entire U.S. economy. And in the process, we have reinflated the stock market, we have reinflated a variety of asset classes, except for the difference this time is Goldman Sachs now owns everything because they were the only ones with the money. It's not everything, but they own a lot more than they otherwise would have, and it's simply become worth a lot more. The tragedy here and the crime is that they never gave us an interest in that money. We gave them $70 billion, and they have all the money and all the so power. So it stayed all within Goldman Sachs. You got it. You know how you fix this? Hmm. You need clawbacks to get back the stolen money. Those profits of Goldman Sachs are the American taxpayers' profits. They're not Goldman Sachs' profits. They used our $70 billion to do it. And we need to get rid of this practice of invisible exchanges where no one can see anything in the, in the financial markets, and then the taxpayer suddenly is on the hook. I think it actually can be done. Can I ask a question? Please. Is this illegal or immoral? This is... Well, it depends on your feeling on stealing, right? <laughs> so this is legalized theft because the Treasury Department, run by former Goldman Sachs CEO Hank Paulson, delivered the money without any strings attached to his former colleagues at Goldman Sachs. So it's legal in the sense that the Treasury Secretary, former Treasury Secretary, Hank Paulson, and current Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner, who was at the New York Federal Reserve, made the decision to supply Goldman Sachs with all the money to buy all the stuff cheap, and they made the decision to supply it with no strings attached. So the crime that was committed was committed, in my opinion, by Treasury Secretary Paulson and then Fed Governor Geithner, who, hmm. as custodians of America's wealth, made the decision to allow the use of that wealth, the gift of that wealth, to one investment bank so that that investment bank could accumulate power over all the assets in America and they themselves could perpetuate the system that they benefit from. This is looking a little bit more like black magic to yeah. me. Instead and that it is. Magic. Thank you very much. It's a little more fun. Regular sleight of hand is a bit more fun. Yeah. It is black magic. That's how they did it. We can stop it by simply distributing the truth to everybody in this country and demanding clawbacks for the money that has been stolen from us. Uh, we are back here on the morning meeting right after this.